discrimination in housing contributes to the persistence of uh, broader inequalities in housing, in home ownership, in neighborhoods, access to education, wealth building. Um, so where we live really matters. In order to know just how big a problem housing discrimination is, the Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, uses a measurement method that's called paired testing. In each test, two people, one white and one minority, uh, call and then visit uh, an apartment complex or a real estate agent's office and inquire about a house or apartment that was just advertised recently. And they make um, the same requests and they describe themselves as having the same income, the same assets, and the same employment. So from the perspective of the landlord or the real estate agent, they really are completely comparable customers. The only difference between them is their race or ethnicity. And if over hundreds of tests, we see that the whites uh, are shown more units, told about more units, that's solid evidence of discrimination. And if our work can rigorously and responsibly measure how often that's happening, uh, we can contribute to uh, progress uh, towards um, eliminating that unfairness. So our new study results find that both the white customer and the minority customer are treated politely. Uh, they get to come and have an appointment, uh, and they find out about some units. Uh, but when you compare their treatment, you discover the whites saw more units or was told about more units. Um, so what's troubling about this kind of discrimination is how hard it is to detect. I had a chance to meet with Justin Carter, who's worked both as a tester and a test coordinator on our housing discrimination studies. And he told me about his personal experiences conducting tests and managing the testing process. So Justin, I've done a huge amount of uh, research testing in my life, but I've never really been a tester. So I have no idea what it's like to walk in the door and actually do the testing myself. Well, being a tester is it's somewhat uh, different than, than the work that you do, being a researcher, but uh, the mentality that I would always take uh, working personally as a tester was, I'm trying to gather data. I'm trying to remain objective and pull as much data from this test as I can. And I've been involved on tests uh, where an agent, you know, has said very objectionable things and said them again and again and again and it just sort of just keeps happening and you're just sitting there and you just have to just you don't want to encourage it you don't want to discourage it but you just sort of have to take it um we walked a little bit in this neighborhood mm -hmm. it's a pretty nice uh homeowner i think mostly neighborhood mm -hmm. um did you test in neighborhoods like this or oh, was it absolutely uh we tested in all neighborhoods all different income levels yeah. Um, and this is exactly the type of neighborhood that we would do a lot of testing in. So neighborhoods like this, you know, we tested these neighborhoods all the time. In horrible weather? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I've been working on these studies uh, since the 1989 study when I was a research associate here at the Urban Institute. It's been really rewarding to um, keep coming back to this issue uh, every decade, those most uh, serious and severe door slamming kinds of discrimination aren't happening so frequently. But it's disappointing to uh, to conduct a study of housing discrimination in 2012 and, and find that it still persists.